Hugh, I want to talk to you about Paddington. I love Paddington. Oh, good. That film is yes. so amazing. How does it feel to have made like a film like that that's just going to be iconic? People are going to be watching that for Christmas. I'm really proud of it because I was really nervous. I thought because I, you know, loved Paddington as a kid, and and I didn't think it was going to, you know, well, I wasn't convinced it was going to work, but it really did, and I think even in a way the second one was even better. So. Uh, it was really, you know, I'm very proud of it. And you do the audiobooks as well? I've done most of the audiobooks. For some reason, Stephen Fry seems to have monopolised uh, the beginning and the end, but I'm allowed to do the ones in the middle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, I actually, this Christmas, have gone to the trouble of um, writing my own uh, children's book, and I've been spending a lot of time slaving over this, and I've finally finished, and this Christmas, I will be releasing my first ever How children's book. How could you have book. written a book, Jay? You never read a book. <laughs> Wouldn't you need to have a bit of experience of reading before you start <laughs> writing? It's called The Grouch. I've written oh. a book called The oh, Grouch. That is it. And okay. I was wondering, as we had one of the greatest actors in the world present here <laughs> this evening, whether you might be willing to read The Grouch to this audience as okay. a kind of world. Okay. 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 Mr. Bonneville. Thank you. The Grouch. <clears throat> the Grouch by Jack Whitehall. Far, far away in a cave on Mount Strumpet lived the Grouch. Here he is with his pipe and ear trumpet. His heart was too cold from all his scorn and doubt, his foot too big on account of his gout. <laughs> he lived near a town whose who land was its name, where lived all the actors of silver screen fame. The Grouch was nearby of his own arrangement, for his profession, you see, was a theatrical agent. Every Christmas, when the moon hit the sky, with his big droopy sack and a glint in his eye, <laughs> he would sneak down to town, and even though it's outrageous, he'd steal 15% of everyone's wages. <laughs> <laughs> he took back the money, his loving family waiting, but to spend it on them, he found nauseating. So instead, it was frittered, squandered and wasted on lame books about Churchill and the grouch getting pasted. <laughs> this happened each year until one Christmas day, the actors decided they had something to say. You've taken too much money, so I'm afraid we're all leaving. The grouch was so angry, went red. He was seething, snorting and spluttering with a huff and a grunt. As they walked down the mountain, he called one of them a... <laughs> Sat in his cave, the grouch now did think, how would he fund his addiction to drink? It was then that he saw a face on TV. The boy looked familiar, but only vaguely. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary, who is this guy with blue eyes and great hair, making them laugh with his wit and his flair? You're joking, Mr. Grouch. That Jedi of fun with the amazing jokes that boy is your son. Pound signs appeared in his glaucoma-ridden eyes. <laughs> if the grouch had a soul, this would be the bit where he cries, I don't need those actors with their lovey-dovey crap. If I want to make money, I'll jump on his back. <laughs> so that is the story. It is not one of cheer, of how the grouch stole Christmas and his own son's career. <laughs> Available in all good bookshops. It's so good.